Blessings. Blessings. Come on in. Blessings to all of you. Come on in. Come on in. As you come on in, please do share the broadcast. I know it's been a while. Come on in. Blessings to all of you. Blessings to all of you. Thank you for coming on in. As you come on in, please do share the broadcast. I'm not going to be long. I just wanted to come on in, encourage you for a moment and get on out of here. As the Spirit of the Lord uh, leads. Blessings. So good to see all of you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all of you, God's people. It is so good to see all of you. So good to see all of the familiar names and new names. Blessings to all of you. Come on, on, come on in. Share the broadcast. Please do type share in the comment section once you have shared the broadcast. Blessings to all of you. Thank you for coming on in. So listen, I'm sitting, I'm sitting down and just meditating as I am praying. And then uh, a lot of people usually think that because you're a pastor in experience, an experience a few days ago, and um. I'm sure it was a test and I sure I'm fail I failed. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people won't admit that a lot of pastors and prophets and apostles and so forth, they will not admit that. I I had a test and I sure I'm sure that I failed. I know that I failed, and the reason why I know that I fail is because the Spirit of the Lord convicted me afterwards. And so I know I failed that um uh exam. No, this isn't on YouTube. Um, this isn't on YouTube. I'll probably post it on YouTube afterwards. It isn't on YouTube live. Uh, so um, like I said, I went, I had an experience just the other day, and I know that it was a test. I went out and I um got up early in the morning, made some breakfast. Um, as you know, many of you know, my goal for uh before the end of this year was to feed a thousand people and we are well on our way and so i got up early that um morning to prepare breakfast i believe this was saturday morning um no friday morning and i got up real early to prepare breakfast and i did i think about uh, somewhere close about 64 uh meals and i went to go and drop them off to the school however i went to the school and when i got to the pacific school that i was supposed to go to I was told that they didn't have school that day and they will not have school for two weeks, for two weeks. Now I'm standing at the gate and I'm like, God, what am I going to do with all of these meals? I've already prepared all of these meals and now these kids won't be in school for another two weeks. What am I going to do? So I jump back into the vehicle and I'm like, well, I'm just going to drive around and give it to give the food. Uh, to people hey hey blessings good to see all of you and i'm like god i'm just gonna drive around and give this food to uh the people on the street i mean if i see people i'm just gonna offer them a bre um some breakfast and so uh right then and there as i got into the car there were some men that was working in the schoolyard i was like hey gents how y'all doing y'all want some breakfast so I give them some breakfast and then I laugh and I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? Um, do you want me to go and just give, out, give away this food? It's already prepared and made. Anyway, long story short, uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me of two schools that was on my way back on the route uh, back to Georgetown. And he told me the two schools to stop to. Uh, would you know that the amount of breakfast that I had was the amount of kids that were in both schools, 30 something in one and 30 something in the other school. And so I did what the Lord told me to do. I gave the breakfast and um, I was leaving as I was leaving. I stopped at the gas station, asked the pump attendant for $15 worth of gas, one five. He ended up putting $50 gas inside of the vehicle. My vehicle couldn't take that much gas. And so when you put too much gas in my vehicle, the fumes will come out of the 
AC. And so I never put in more than $50. Long story short is he thought that I said 50. He in fact put in 50, but I didn't want 50. And so I was like, you know what? I didn't ask you for 50. I asked you for 50. And long story short is it frustrated me. It really frustrated me because I had plans for the day. And so that was like, I was to the gas station waiting for the supervisor and the manager to rectify the problem. And I was there for about an hour and a half and it frustrated me. And so when I finally did leave the gas station, I say, God, I know I failed. Uh, I said, because I should have just leave it alone and not even wait for this money. I said, I should have just leave it alone. And I said, and I feel frustrated. I feel drained. And this is what happened after I went and give free breakfast to the school. What am I saying to you? I'm saying that no matter what you do, in this time and in this season, God will have you to do certain things. Don't think that the enemy won't be right there in wait in order to get you or to set you in a trap to not for you not to receive what God has for you. And I said, I'm on my way driving back to Georgetown. I said, God, I know I failed. I said, Holy Spirit, I feel the conviction. I know I failed that exam. I And, and I, I just need you to forgive me. And the thing about it is, although I was not the one that was wrong in this situation, before I left, I called the young man and I apologized to him and I repented before him and I left the station. However, I because I still apologized to him, although I was not the one that was wrong and I still felt convicted. And so I prayed and I fast, I prayed. And I asked the Lord to forgive me. And man, that, that whole afternoon, I couldn't get it out of my mind. Couldn't get it out of my mind. Because I don't know if anybody else feel this way. As a woman of God, when I am wrong and I know that I am uh, uh, wrong, I would go and I would try to make it right. But the thing that hurts the most is when you know you are not wrong and you're still being convicted <laughs> to apologize and leave things alone. And so the human side of me was like, no, no, no. I want my money. I got to get this rectified. But my heart was like, let it go. Leave it alone. And so what I had to do is come back home and I had to repent and I had to go into prayer reference to that matter. But that's not what I came in for. I'm, that I went through all that just to say to you that I failed. <laughs> and I had to go back and ask for repentance. Most pastors and leaders won't admit when they fail. That was a test. And I failed that test. But people of God, I want to say to you today, um, I came in just for a few minutes just so that I can encourage you uh, in your spirit. As I was sitting down just now, I said to the Lord, and this has been my prayer from the beginning of the year, um, from I turned 39. I said, God, I am almost 40 years old. I said, there are some things that you promised me. There are some things that you said to me, and I need to see these things come to pass. And, and, and as many of you know, as you start to get older and the promises that God made to you and you don't see them, you become worried and, 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 and we are Christians. You become worried and you keep on asking God, God, what happened? You promised me the children. You promised me the marriage. You promised me the house, but I'm not seeing these things as yet. You promised me, you know, spiritual gifts. You promised me some things, but I don't see these things yet. And so for many of us, we are at the point being at um, almost the end of the year, it's November. And some of us, we holding on by a thread and we're asking God, God, what happened to the promises at the beginning of the year we started off strong we, we declared some things we said some things we fasted some of us went on a 21 days some of us did a seven day 14 days and we started off this year strong but there were so many obstacles along the way and for many of us now in november are not re, um, seeing the manifestation of the things that we've been praying for and the things we've been fasting for and we are now at the point at the crossroads where we're asking God what happened. And so I was sitting down here, God, I am almost 40 years old. I've been asking you for some things now for the past eight years. And I began to say to God, God, my best years already, I already passed my best years in my 20s and my early 30s. And God, I, I don't have no more good years. I'll never be at this uh, at, at, at best of a shape that I am now. I'm like, God, am I just going to sit here and waste away? before you give me what it is that you promised to give me and the Lord said to me as I was sitting here and I want to encourage you in your spirit because I know many of you you're asking the same question you done reached 50 and you don't have any children yet you've been married for five years 
15 years, 20 years, and yet you cannot have any children for your husband. Husbands, you've been waiting on your wives to bear children, and it seems as if it's not happening. People have been calling you barren. You've been waiting on marriage, and it seems as if it's not happening. The wife is not materializing. The husband is not materializing. Although you can see it, you can feel it, but it's just not materializing in the physical realm, in the natural realm. You know it's happening, but you cannot see it. And so I, I, I begin to sit down and I begin to ask God, what is happening? What door do I have open that is causing me to, to, that is causing the blockage? What it is that I'm doing to cause me not receive what you have for me? And I begin to say to the Lord, God, I'm getting up in age. Some things need to happen and they need to happen now. And I begin to complain. Yes, that's what I begin to complain. God, I am tired. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of working. I'm tired of being the, 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 the one in the vineyard working. And yet I'm still not seeing manifestation. Come on, somebody. I need you to get me. Come go with me in the spirit. God, I've been working. I've been preaching. I've been prophesying. I've been laying hands. I've been encouraging. I've been feeding. But what is it that you have for me that I cannot see it? I've been uh, prophesying to other people and it's been coming to pass in a matter of days. But God, what happened to me? What happened to me? I've seen it happen to the other people. I've seen the other people being promoted. I've seen other people being married. I've seen other people having children. I'm seeing other people um, um, having their businesses and they're prospering and they succeed in their bit. God, what happened? And as I sit here throwing a, a spiritual tantrum, like a big three-year-old, and the Lord said to me, what does age matter to me? I want to declare to some ladies on this line today, as the Lord said to me and encourage my spirit, I want to encourage you. What does your age matter to me? What is your age to God? What is your waiting time to God? What does your what does your age mean to God? And so people of God, listen, I don't care if you 50. I don't care if you're 55. I don't care if you're 65 approaching 70. If God says he's going to send that husband, you better believe you can cash take that check to the bank because he's going to do what he says he's going to do. If God says that the children are going to come, the children are going to come. If God says the business is going to be successful, I don't care how much um, 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 voodoo, I don't care how much black magic, I don't care how much white magic, red magic, I don't care how much Santa Maria they call on. Listen, no matter what they come and drop in front of your porch, in front of the church, in front of your business, it will not prosper. The weapons, listen, the weapons will form, but they cannot prosper. Whatever God said to you that he will do, he is is about to do it. This now, this last quarter of this year, God is about to move in your life like never yet before. Listen, it is not up for discussion. God says, I am not a man that I should lie. Come on, somebody. I placed it in the comment section. He says to me, he said to me, sitting down right in my bed, he says, Marvel, what is your age to me? He said, what is your age to me? You talking about 40 years old and you're not married and what you want. God said, what what is your age to me? Do you not know who I am? Have I not come through for you before? My God, I don't know who I'm speaking to today. So even as the Lord was speaking to me and encouraging my spirit, I want to come on and encourage someone. Listen, what is your age to God? What is your waiting period to God? What is it to God? What, what is it that God cannot do? What is it? What mountain that you have in your life now that is standing in your way that he cannot move? What is the thing that is blocking you from getting to the next season? What is the man? Listen, what are your tears to God? Come on, somebody. What is your loneliness to God? God says, listen, I am not a man that I should lie. And I begin to feel, feel some type of way when God asks me a question. Am I a man that I should lie? Come on, somebody. He begin to question me. And as he begin to question me, I begin to feel some type of way in my spirit. I'm like, God, I understand. Yes, that 
somebody. I understand that you're not a man. I said, but God, I, I'm, I'm going to be 40 in a couple months. I, I, God, I ask you for certain things and I need to see these things. I need these things to come into manifestation. Are you going to allow me to be embarrassed? Are you going to allow me to prophesy to everyone else and it cannot happen to me? I, I refuse to be one of those persons that speak and declare all my life and cannot live in it. I say, God, I need to see some things moving in my life. I need to see your hands in my life. And I begin to speak to my daddy. And he began to say to me, mother, I am not a man that I should lie. He said, when I speak a thing, it shall come to pass. He says, when you declare it, he says, once you declare it, it has already been declared in the heavens. And so all you got to do is reach out and grab it. I man, come on somebody on this line today. I don't know what you've been waiting on. I don't know what you've been fasting for. I don't know what you've been declaring. I don't know what you've been uh, uh, decreeing. I don't know what you've been waiting for. But can I declare to you that Yahweh is not a man that he should lie. And whatsoever he says that he will do, it shall come to pass. Why? Because his words cannot return to him void. So I don't care if you 35. I don't care if you're 55. If God said he was going to do it, man, listen, that thing is going to come to pass. There is nothing that God says he's going to do that he's not going to do. If you are in alignment are you and you are walking in alignment, you are going to see the manifestation of God. I want to declare to about 50 people on this line tonight, today, that whatever God said to you, if you are bold enough to declare it, he is about to make that thing available to you. You are about to walk into your season of manifestation. Listen, I ain't just speaking words to you. I am moving by the unction of the Holy Spirit. You are about to see manifestation. You are about to walk into manifestation. You are about to walk into your marriage. You are about to walk into your home. You are about to walk into success when it comes to your business. You are about to carry that baby. You are about to hold that baby. You are about to, my listen, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you better catch this in the spirit. Come on, somebody. And he said to me, am I a man that I should lie? I said, God, I understand. He says, now what I need you to do is stand still. He says, stand still and watch my salvation. He said, stand still and watch what I'm about to do. He says, when they think that I'm not about to do it, that's when I'm about to do it. In Numbers 23 and 19, he says, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it? And shall he not do it? Or have he spoken it? And shall he not make it good? I want to declare to you that God's word is good. And he shall bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass. Listen, there's some people that's been sitting down and laughing at you, man. Can I say it to you? There's some people, they've been sitting down and they've been laughing at you. Because for the longest, you've been declaring and you've been speaking. You've been declaring marriage. You've been speaking the business. You've been speaking, listen, and they've been laughing at you. You know why they've been laughing at you? Because they are seeing ones that have been praying against you. Some of us, we talk too much. The minute you say you're going to open the business, they run back and they begin to pray. Business over my dead body. When you say, yes, I'm about to have the babies. I will get married. I will have to listen. They're the same ones who turn around and start to laugh. But can I declare to you today, that even as I hear the Holy Spirit says, it's open season. My God. I Man, somebody, I need you to declare on this line, open season. Open season open season. I just hear the Lord said it's open season. He says, I'm about to move in the lives of my people like never yet before. He says, there's about to be great manifestation. He says, there's about to be surprises. He says, listen, he said, there's some things I'm about to uncover in your lives. He says, some things has been digged down. And he says, and I have to uproot some things in order for you to get what it is that I have for you in this season. So many of you, you've been waiting, you've been fasting, you've been praying, and you've been asking God what happened. 
happen. The Lord says, listen, you had some snakes, you had some cobras, you had some man, listen, some vampires, you had some people in your life that just was sucking away everything. And so God says, yes, I, it was me that had to cause you to come to a lonely place. Yes, it was me that had to cause that relationship to end. It was me that caused that job to release you. It was me to cause that thing to happen. He says, because I had to get you all alone. I had to get you by yourself. He says, because what I have for you in the next season, he says, this thing that I have for you, this weighty anointing that I'm placing on you, you cannot have those snakes around you. You can't have those leeches around you. He says, I had to cut some ties. He says, yes, it hurt. You did not understand what I was doing in your past season. He says, but now you're about to jump into your next season. Come on, somebody, I need you to declare it. It is open season. God says the next season that I'm about to slingshot you to, it is your open season. The things you've been praying for, the things you've been waiting on, God says to you today, I am not a man that I should lie. Come on, somebody. And so he's about to do it. He's about to bring it forth, man. Come on. Those that said it couldn't happen, those that laugh at you and say you couldn't have that baby, man. Come on. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But the very person that's been asking you for years. Or oh, you can't have a baby, ain't you barren? They the see that's the same one that went and tie up your wombs. But I hear God says, I'm about to, my God, to lay you out as a sacrifice on a table. And he says, this table has already been prepared in the presence of your enemies. And he says, listen, all of them are now seated. My God, my God, what is this that I'm hearing today? He says, every last one of them has gotten their invitation and they are now seated. And I hear the Lord says, he's going to pour you out as a drink offering. He says, the very thing that they said couldn't happen, the very thing that they thought was dead, gone gone the very thing they thought couldn't survive the very thing they said was never going to take place uh, the very situation that they thought they left you in to die in God says listen I'm about to breed on that situation I'm about to cause you to come to life uh, I'm up I'm about to cause you to give birth uh, I'm about to cause you to be the CEO I'm about to cause you to get that promotion come on somebody yes they talk yes they laugh yes Yes, they said over their dead bodies. God says in this season, I'm about to move for my people like never yet before. People of God, prepare yourselves, prepare yourself, prepare yourself. We are about to see some things in the earth like never yet before. But God says for my righteous, he says, my righteous, I will uphold you. And so we've been waiting. We've been fasting. We've been waiting on the Lord. And it seems as if. It's not going to happen. But God says, just when they thought it wasn't going to happen. Aha, my God. Aha. I need somebody just to type that. Aha. Aha. Surprise, surprise. My, listen, you're about to walk in the door and all you got to say is, aha. They thought it wasn't going to happen. My God, my God, my God. Let me tell y'all, I was sitting down here complaining. I was running here throwing my little hissy fit and my little tantrum asking God why and asking God when and I, telling God that I too old and Jesus this happening and that happening. How this supposed to take place and when this can take place. Man, listen, I'm feeling joy and peace in my spirit like never yet before. There's a joy and a peace and a happiness that has come over me. Listen, when you are in the presence of God, there is fullness forevermore. There is peace. There is joy. There is love. Listen, let me tell you something. Whatever God says he will do, he will do it. And so we got to keep pushing. We are in our aha moment. We are in our open season. Aha. Mm -hmm. God is about to do it. You're about to give birth to that child. As a matter of fact, many of you double for your troubles. <laughs> Double for your troubles. They laughed. They said you would never have it. They said you would never get the degree. Degree. No, um, degree. Degree. 
They said you'll never get the diploma. They said they said you would never get the certificate. They said you would never get married. They said you would never amount to anything. They said that you would never be a pastor. They said you will never, ever, ever in this lifetime prophesy while they're still alive. They said that you will never be invited on other pulpits as long as they are alive. They said that you will never minister. They said that you will never have the vehicle. They said you will never have the house. They said you will never have the business. They said you will never finish school. Let Listen, can I decree and declare to you today that it is done? I need somebody to, to, to declare on this line, it's done. It's done. It is done. Maria, aha, surprise. It is done. It is done. Listen, can I tell some of y'all, some people done gone and bury y'all? They done went and bury y'all. Listen, let me tell you, they already went and bury y'all. They done sing the church hymn. They done listen. They done sing the hymns. They done sing all the funeral songs. They done dance their little dance. They done had their celebration. They done pop their little wine because they say you finish. But can I declare to you today that your Lazarus, my God, Oh, Jesus, that your Lazarus season is here. My God, everything that they thought that they killed. My God, man, listen, they left you in a particular place to die. And they are about to come back. That's one thing about predators and killers. They know the damage they done do. And they leave you in a particular place to die. And so now they're coming back to check. Nakia, they're coming back to check. To see if you're still in that same position. they coming to see if you done dead. they coming now to say, huh, now they're coming to throw the dust on her and say dust to dust. Mm -hmm. But God said not so. Ha! God said not so. Not so. Not so. You know, funeral hymns can be sung today. No black dresses can be worn today. No black suits will be worn today. God says, not today. Lazarus, Lazarus, get up, man. Not today. You will not lay down and die. You will not lay down and play dead. You will not lay down and play possum. You will not lay down and take what they say. You will not lay down every generational curse that has been speaking over your life. It has to be broken today. Every negative negative word that has been spoken over your life, your family life, your children that has been spoken against your business. We command it to be broken now. Everything that they went to the witchcraft doctor and the voodoo priest to do to you, come on somebody, it has to be broken today in the name of Jesus. Every name, every name, every one of your names that they have written down on parchment paper and placed in caves and under the water and in bottles. Man, listen, we call Call the fire of the living God to destroy every man. Come on, every bottle to uproot everything that has been buried in the ground with your name on it. Listen, the very ones that so-called call you and say that they praying for you, man, you all better be careful who you are praying with in this season. You all better ask God to, uh, to give you all some eyes to recognize who you are praying with in this season. Because for some of y'all, the very people you are praying with is the very ones who praying against your wombs being tied. And you trying to figure out why you can't have no children for your husband as a matter of fact there's a lady on this line now that you're married you already have two children outside of wedlock but the minute you got married you could never have a child for your husband and you've been married for some time now i don't know let me tell you something you on this line now you already have two kids i'm seeing two kids i seeing like a taller one and i'm seeing like a shorter one as the spirit of the lord reveal a boy and a girl you already have a boy and a girl and you've been praying to have a child for your husband guess what and the very person that you think is your friend as a matter of fact it's a family member has already tied up your wounds because of jealousy my god jealousy and they say that you will never never because they were surprised when you got married they were surprised 
They were surprised. You had some instructions. You right on this live feed. You are right on this live feed. You had some instructions and you went and you got married. And a lot of people knew when you got married, but you've been married now for years and you cannot have a child. Whoever you are, I'm not asking you to identify yourself, but I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray. I can need y'all to light up. I can need y'all to light up this, this broadcast. I can need y'all to light up this broadcast. Who can speak in their spiritual language? I need you to begin to pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come to you, Father God, I pray right now for this lady that has been praying for years to have children for her husband. I pray right now, Father God, that her wombs will be loose right now in the name of Jesus. Not only will her wombs become loose and she will have that child, but you will Give her double for her trouble. The many years that she's been waiting to have children for her husband. That you, Father God, will implant implant a seed. Two seeds, Father God. Double for her trouble. That she'll be able, Father God, to give birth to two children for her husband. Father, I pray that her name that has been written down and buried, Father God, in the graveyard. I command that thing to be released now. I command that thing to be broken right now. I call upon the fire of the living God to uproot, to burn, to shatter, to scatter everything, Father God, that is not of you. We command it to be broken right now in the name of Jesus. We speak, Father God, a spirit of release over this woman now in the name of Jesus. She shall testify. She shall testify by the year of um, 2021. By the ending of 2021, she will hold both of her children her kids, both children in her hands. And I hear the Lord says, you will call your babies Elijah and Elijah. Receive it, whoever you is on this life feed. God says, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. And he says, the name of your children shall be Elijah. And Elijah. And God says, surely I shall be with you. Surely I shall be with you. Listen, people of God. I only came on for a moment just to encourage you in your spirit. God says, I'm about to move like never yet before. There's someone on this live feed. I see where somebody has erected a altar in Jamaica. I see an altar that has been erected and, the, and it's been erected in Jamaica. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the Jamaican flag and I'm seeing the Jamaican colors. I'm hearing the word anti. You've been having some inkling. You've been trying to figure out, you say, God, I have some idea of what it might be, but you didn't want to speak it out loud. You write on this live feed. It's someone in Jamaica, and I'm hearing auntie, so more than likely it's your family member and auntie that has, my God, oh Lord, I hear. Mm. That's why I don't like doing these lines. Just pop up on Facebook Live, man. Because I still want to see your line, man. Listen, I still want to see your business, man. I, I really don't. Yes, I'm saying where altar has been erected. They don't want you to be successful in anything. You've been working for years in the Bahamas. And you can't see where your money going. And it seems as if nothing is happening for you. I command that altar to be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Wherever that altar is located in Jamaica. I command that altar to be shattered right now. We send forth the angels of the living God to locate that altar. I don't know where Kingston is. But I see the altar. Kingston and there's a big tree. There's a big tree in the yard. Mama mande bo shatara ba 
Rashikorobosi. Rotorobosi kamamaman debo shatarabashi. There's a big tree. Ratarabashokorobosi. And that's where the altar has been erected. Ekamande bo shatar. Rotorobosi kadabababashikorobosi. Spirit of the living God. Ratarabashikorobosi kamamaman debo shatar. Rotorobosi. Yes, God. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. What is happening now is the angels of the living God is locating that altar and destroying it. How you will know that I'm speaking to you is you will have a dream where you see this tree uh, being demolished. You will message me. Please do message me on the Walking Into Destiny live page and not the Marvel Lewis page. The Lord is showing me where he will visit you in a dream and he will show you. It's a huge tree. It's a big tree. Kingston, auntie. <laughs> Boy, people wicked, you know. People are wicked. I'm here in Kingston. Um, I've never been to Jamaica. I am. Um, I think um, there's a place named Kingston. I don't know where it's located specifically, but the angels of the Lord know where exactly where it is and they are there now. <laughs> We bind up every evil, wicked plan of the enemy. We come against retaliation and backlash. You will have the dream. And soon after you have the dream, soon after you have the dream, go on a three-day fast and you can start to notice some change in your life. Drastic change. Drastic change. There's another person on this live feed. Some things in your home has been missing. If that's you, you can identify yourself. Some things, like things been missing out of your home. And for some reason, you keep thinking that you're tripping out because like things missing out of your home. Things been missing out of your home. And you keep on saying, and listen, I know I had this. I know I had this. I know I had this. Things been missing out of your home. That is an evil some monitoring spirit has been sent against you and what they're doing now is they trying to cause you to go out of your mind mm -hmm. a spirit of insanity a spirit of insanity yes you get to the point now where you're in so much fear that you can't even sleep you're getting so paranoid that you can't even sleep. And when you sleeping, you got to turn on the lights. You got to leave the TV on, uh, uh, stuff like that. I'm even seeing in the spiritual realm where I'm hearing sounds like doors closing and opening and, and little squeaking sound like, you know, like when you're stepping on wood and it's not stable. And that's what I'm hearing, like a creaking type of sound. I'm hearing creaking sound. I'm hearing doors slamming. Um, um, and, and, and I'm seeing where things are missing, little small things are missing. You may have $21.52 and, and and you will see, notice that one cent is missing. It's small things, small little things. You all help me pray. Yes, Lord. It's been a, a monitoring spirit that has been sent against you to monitor you. And they send a spirit of insanity. Yes, Lord. Father, we come against the spirit of insanity right now in the name of Jesus. We break the back of insanity right now in the name of Jesus. Insanity, you have no place here. You have no place here. This person is a vessel of the living God and we command you to vacate right now in the name of Jesus. We call upon the blood of Jesus to completely fill this vessel where the blood of Jesus is. Darkness cannot reside. And so we command you to pick up your weapons and we command you now to get up and go. We command you, you spirit of insanity, to get up and go. You have been released from your assignment. Your assignment assignment has listen your assignment is done it's time for you to go you wreak enough havoc in this person's life we command you to go now in the name of jesus we rebuke every plan every plan of the, 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 the devour every plan for you to, to, to suck up every plan for you to destroy and every plan for you to cause this person to lose their mind we destroy it we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus, somebody come on and shout. Hallelujah. 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 God, we bless you. 
So everything that you've been praying for, you've been fasting for, and it's been months, it's been years, you asking God, when is it going to happen? God says, I'm about to move in your life like never yet before. Before we leave this live feed, I need somebody to declare, Tag, it's you. Tag, it's you. Tag, it's you. Come on, somebody. And if you're in the house with somebody, I need you just to tap them on the shoulder and say, Tag, baby, it's you. If you in the house and you near someone, you just listen, just tag them and say, Nas, if you next to your husband, you next to your um um wife, tag them and say, Tag, it's you. It's you. Come on, somebody, tag, tag, come on, tag, it's you. It's your turn now. Tag, it's your turn now. It is your turn now. You watch everybody else celebrate. You watch everyone else got married. You watch other people have babies and you celebrate it with them. Tag. It's you. Tag, it's your season now. It's your Lazarus season. It's your season of manifestation. It's your season to see it now. It's your season. Come on, somebody. Tag, it's you. Tag, it's you. Tag, it's you. Tag, 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 it's you. Come on, somebody. Tag, it's you. I need somebody to declare it as we leave this live feed. Come on, somebody. I need you to declare tag, 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 it's you. Come on, somebody, tag, it's you. Hallelujah. 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 Tag, it's you. God is about to do it. Manifestation. Restoration. Manifestation. Restoration. God is about to move in your life like never yet before. God is about to move. In your life like never yet before. Tag. T-A-G. Tag. Like you know when you play in uh, hide and seek. And you touch somebody and you say tag. Yes tag. T-A-G. Tag. It's you. Yes Lord. God is about to move like never yet before. Some of you will experience your Lazarus season. Where you're about to wake up. You're about to experience God like never yet before. There's a lot of things that God is breaking. There's a lot of hollow grants that are being broken up right now. There's a lot of altars that are being broken and uprooted even now. Even in this weather that we're having, there's a lot of things. I'm hearing a ringing in my ears. Even, even now, there's a lot of altars that are being uprooted. There are a lot of things that are being pulled up out of the ground now. Many of you, you're about to see a shift in your life. You're about to see a shift in your business. You're about to see even a shift in your workplace. There's a lot of you, you've been seeing one or two persons being missing from your workplace. God says, they ain't coming back. He says, they ain't coming back. Because there's some things that they've been doing. And, and and they thought, and they thought that nobody could see it. Alara, that's it. Tag, it's you. Yes, that's it. And and a lot of people figure that nobody could see them. But let me tell you something. Our father, he sees everything. He knows all, and he sees all. And so when they thought that nobody saw what they was doing, listen, God saw them. And so for many people, God dealing with them and they don't listen. <laughs> Sometimes God is be saving us from things and we don't even know. We don't even know. Sometimes it's way after the fact when God says, remember when I told you? And I'm like, yes. He said, look around. And I would look around and I'd be like, wow. Listen, God is moving in this season like never yet before. Even with this uh, weather system that we're having, even now there's a lot of things that are happening. Think it not strange that this uh, storm, I didn't even know about it because I really don't watch too much uh, TV. And I'm, I'm just finding out about it. But even um, here in Exuma, it's been raining every day for about two weeks. And the Lord began to speak to me. He says, there are some things in the ground. He said, I had to saturate the ground in order for some things to come up. So this storm has come with a lot of water, a lot of water, because there's some things in the ground that had to, he had to, man, some things had to come up. 
They had to come up. There's some things that in the ground have to be man. The word that I'm hearing is drown. They had to drown some things that are in the ground. Songs read, but God too see this do some weird things. And so the Lord says there's a lot of things that has been planted in the ground against his people that's been holding you from your uh, purpose that's been holding you back from your destiny. And God says, for many of you, you will see a shift in your finances. Oh, thank you, Shah. Thank you. Thank you, Shah. Um, you will see a shift in your finances. You will see a shift even in your home for that person uh, who was hearing the sounds, um, um, who's hearing the sounds in your home, who has the spirit of um, insanity, insanity in there anymore. But I need you to get some olive oil and begin to anoint every exit and entry point, which that means all doors, all windows. The person that had the spirit of insanity and even torment was there. But once we pray against sanity, torment will leave also. But um, uh, the spirit of insanity that was sent and the monitoring spirit, I need you to get some oil and I need you to anoint every exit and entry point, which is all doors and all windows. And that is for the doors that are on the inside um, um, of your home also. And so, people of God, blessings to all of you. Tag, you're it. <laughs> Tag, you are it. Blessings to all of you. Your weight is over. God is moving in your life. You're in your season of uh, a manifestation, your season of restoration. Listen, I'm not just quoting words to you because I feel like quoting words. I only say what God tell me to say. I know you all notice by now. I only say what God tell me to say. I don't argue. I don't fuss and I don't carry on. I only say what he tell me to say and I leave it alone. Amen. And so blessings to all of you. Thank you so much for uh, coming on in and listening to this broadcast. I pray that this serve as an encouragement to your spirit. And for those of you, uh, listen, deliverance take place, um, took place even on this line tonight. Even on this line, I keep on saying tonight, what time it is, this afternoon, um, um, deliverance took place on this line. And so for um, those of you that got your deliverance, listen, uh, the person with the altar, the, the, the man, listen, when you have that dream, message me because listen, if God said it, he's going to do it. And so the Lord is going to visit you with that dream. Uh, this tree that is in, um, 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 Jamaica, um, not many, uh, weeks from now, uh, uh, you're going to get a call to, and they're going to tell you this person has passed away. They're going to tell you this person passed away. Uh, uh, guess what? Uh, don't try to find the money to try to attend the funeral. Don't go. Give your um condolences, but don't go. And 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 and, and like I said, it's an aunt. In a few short weeks, if you all hear me, in a few short weeks, you're going to receive a call, and this person is going to pass. They're gonna tell you this person pass away. Blessings to all of you. And I can only say what God tell me to say. Blessings to all of you. Love you for watching. Um, I um, I, I think I'm going to post this on YouTube for the my YouTube uh, uh, watchers that are not on Facebook. And so I'm going to post this on YouTube. Blessings to all of you. I love you for watching. And for those of you that share this broadcast, uh, may the Lord continue to bless you. May you open up the windows of heaven and continue to pour the blessing that you will not have room to contain. So therefore you will overflow and have to share. In Jesus' name we pray. Blessings to all of you. I come against retaliation and backlash and every prophetic word that was spoken over this line. I seal it with the blood of Yeshua. Blessings to all of you. Good afternoon, everybody.